All right, welcome to this week's edition of Top of the Shop. I'm your host, Robbie Votaw. Joining us today, we've got some awesome out-of-towners from Grain Valley in addition to a lot of new faces, so get ready for Ultra Street Fighter 4 here at Pew Pew Card and Game. You can follow along at home on the bracket at challenge.com. Uh, in today's broadcast, there's the link for that. So round one today, we've got L. Alex versus newcomer Ark versus Combat Kid, uh, Trevor Davis, Aqualad versus Dallas, and Blanca Cat versus Watson. So that is your round one. Red CEO, Riles Barkley, Steel Panther, and Prophet Beast have buys going into round two. We've got a 12-man tournament this week. So let's get it ready. we got L. Alex versus Ark first. All right, so here we go into round number one, Ark versus L. Alex. So, of course, as always, questions or comments from me, let us know in that chat box. You can also hit me up at PewPewCNG on Twitter or at Robbie underscore Vota. So, Ark, uh, a Smash Brothers player, he has brought out some new guys out to the tournament today, so excited to see what they are capable of. Ark been playing Guy and transitioning from the 3DS, I believe, to full console. So uh, he will be going against L. Alex. So this is probably marks a month of L. Alex's top in the shop appearance. This is his fourth one, I believe, playing Cody. So we have a classic Cody versus Guy grudge match right off the get go. So Guy, a light, kind of a light vortex character, also addition to the rushdown abilities of his uh, light attacks, namely crouching short. So he's going to want to apply frontal pressure that way. Looks like we're going to get a button check underway. So Ark also, another note about him, uh, he is also playing with a pad. So uh, our first pad player in, uh, in the tournament, I know Spire sometimes would use uh, a pad, but uh, a mix nonetheless. So <laughs> who is Spire? Who is the Spire fan? Actually, we have both mics going today, so I don't know if anybody else wants to jump in on commentary. Um, we are going to have uh, Guy versus Cody. So again, I was talking a little bit about uh, the Guy Vortex. So he's going to want to mix up those Bushinru, uh, those flips into the throws to achieve the hard knockdowns, and then in addition to his target combos. L. Alex, on the other hand, uh, Cody is a uh, another frontal uh, pressure character. Got a little bit of ranged with that uh, rock, but Guy with this floaty jump going to be able to get around that. So expect Alex to try to want to close the gap early on and create frame trap pressure uh, with those medium punches. Uh, and also, has, and also uh, Ark will have to be aware of that EX Zonk Knuckle. Lots of invincibility on that. All right, so we're going to get it into. So if, as always, this is the best. This is a two. Out, these are two out of three rounds. We are back on OBS this week. Don't ask me how, but we are. Starting things early off with that uh, air grab. Expecting Alex to go to the air. Now, one thing I will always compliment Alex on is his, uh, even though he's a new player, he like, never jumps. Or jumps very, very rare. So both players just trying to work back and forth here. Trying to establish, kind of get a feel of what one player is capable over the other. We're seeing those rocks right there, that elbow cut short on the jump arc, managed to catch rock on the toes. So that's one of uh, Guy's really good strengths, his ability to cut his jump arc short. You can bait out a lot of a lot of reversals that way. Of course, that's the down medium punch. Oh, too far outside to grab. It's a slide, focus attack, trying to base something out. Really good hallmark of Guy players is the ability to uh, focus attack and then dash away on your wake up. L. Alex could chase it down though with the criminal uh, uppercut. And right now, L. Alex in trouble. Art going for the meaty EX up, uh, uppercut is Tatsumaki. Gonna nail out the win anyways. So Cody has a lot of uh, burst stun potential in some of his combos. A lot of them use the crouching hard punch. There's one of the variants of Guy's run. He's got a slide, he's got an overhead, and he's got a stop. Kind of akin to El Fuerte. 
off the wall. Art trying to get some pressure started here. Great neutral jump elbow right there. I really like to see that as a big pressure tool. The Bushini lips are, or flips are all over the place. Now Alex finally saying, get off me. Got the knockdown, gets the meaty rocks. Trying to make something happen with ruffian kicks. I haven't really seen him use a lot of ruffian kicks. Oh, super got blown. Probably on accident. And now Alex just kind of wobbling back and forth here, trying to get some something started. And Ark is just basically poking away, saying, I'm going to have all these different options for offense. I'm just going to basically pressure you until something works. There's the overhead. Oh, the knife is picked up. We streets now, but not enough. As Ark slides in, we'll be safe at home, and we'll get the first win. So again, two out of three sets. Loser always able to go to the drawing board, pick a new character. L. Alex is going to stick to Cody. So that slide, uh, hopefully Alex picked up that that slide can be punished. Jab, jab, crouch, medium punch. You can always cancel that into Criminal Upper. Like I said, both these players kind of knew. Oh, EX overhead. Now guy does get one click of armor on that EX run, so to get one of the ways, another way he can, or one of the many ways he can get around projectiles is by using that armor. Now Alex making very liberal use of the Ruffian Kick. Of course, Ruffian Kick has three different modes. It's got low, middle, and high. The high one can be used as an anti-air space properly. He gets Criminal Upper here, coming into the midnight hour. Well, EX Zong going to take out that uh, Hazan show. And here comes the Ruffian Kick. Red Focus blown up by a low Ruffian Kick. Can Alex make a comeback here? EX rocks. All he's got to do is just hold on for a little while longer. Down the chip. A great sequence of special moves right there. Almost got Alex the comeback. But Ark, managing to stay vigilant, slides in for a tap on the toe. So again, that low Ruffian Kick. Making a lot of money for L. Alex so far. Trying to get a link started. Now Alex maybe smelling blood in the water. Great combo right there. Jab to low fierce to criminal uppercut. Um, yeah, criminal uppercut. Oh, punish opportunity. Tar combo by Ark. Guys, high damage in co combos and good machinery flip. Going for number two. We got the trash vortex. Settled down by Ruffian Kick. There's the bingo. Whew, try to go for a high-low mix-up right there. I like it. Oh, the target combo unable to be finished. The overhead and the elbow. Arc will take it. 2-0. So good stuff to both those guys, man. I really like that combo that L. Alex has managed to string over, string together in that round. All right, so coming up next, we have Combat Kid versus Trevor Davis. Alright, so Combat Kid versus Trevor Davis. Two brand newcomers to the scene. Glad to have them out as always. So again, you are watching Top in the Shop for September 16th, 2014. Appreciate you guys watching. If you are new to our stream, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Glad to have you as always, we love you. I'm just pilot going solo on commentary tonight. Thor Burmeister not here, gotta deal with school stuff down at UCM. If you're interested in uh, coming out, checking out our Street Fighter scene, located here in Oak Grove, Missouri, just off I-70. Kansas City, Raytown, Independence, Lee Summit, Blue Springs, Grain Valley, Oak Grove, Odessa, and so on. Love to see you come out and play. Also stream DayZ if you're interested in post-apocalyptic survival zombie action. Hit that subscribe button. You'll be notified every time we go live. So 
So both these guys are brand new to uh, our scene. Uh, I know Combat Kid uh, has got some experience with Street Fighter. Watching him play casuals earlier today. Trevor Davis is brand new. Literally as brand new as you can get. Asked me if he wanted to play in our free-to-play tournament today. And he was like, yeah, sure, I'll give it a shot. You never know until you try. So Combat Kid going with Ken Masters, Shoto, Uppercut, Fireball, Tatsumaki. Trevor Davis all over the place. You know, I mean, he's figuring out buttons. He's saying, what works? What does this button do? How does this input go? And Combat Kid making all of his money off that, uh, I always want to call that Green Ranger outfit, Ken. So, I mean, not a lot to say. I said, when you're a new player, I mean, the worst thing you can ever do as a new player is not pick up the controller. I gotta mute the mic really quick. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> I don't know what that is. That's crazy. I don't know. It's like a spider. All right. So you know, I really gotta give I really gotta give props to Trevor Davis for just coming out and playing. Comic Kid take number one. I mean, you know, this is one of those things where if you're a new player and you're curious about wanting to learn Street Fighter or other fighting games, because we also host one of the biggest Smash scenes. What? Oh, we also host one of the biggest Smash scenes in Missouri, far and away. No better place to learn those games other than out here at Pew Pew Card and Game, for sure. And really, you know, if Trevor Davis can kind of figure out on the fly, just kind of like a basic combo, like jump, hard kick, sweep, um, then, you know, he could, he could make some mileage off of it. And Combat Kid just kind of using very fundamental stuff. When the guy is far away from you, throw a fireball. When he's up close, try an uppercut. I really like the low forward to fireball cancel he's doing right there. Standard Ken Master stuff. So, yeah, again, if you've ever, if you've ever watched some of these high-level Street Fighter uh, streams like uh, Wednesday Night Fights and uh, NLBC, and you're, uh, you're, you know, you've been intimidated to come out and play, this is a great place for low- to mid-level players to get that work in and feel that progress. In addition to a very learning-based community, so everybody here wants everybody else to get better. All right, so Combat Kid will take it 2-0. Again, this is a double elimination tournament, so we will see Trevor Davis again tonight. And if you want to follow along at home in the bracket, check us out. It's in the title. Aqualad versus Dallas. Coming up next. So these are two of our top in the shop, I want to say, uh, veterans. Alright, so here we go. Dallas and Aqualad. So Dallas uh, has been uh, in and out of the scene, uh, being busy with school. Aqualad is like a ghost. He just kind of disappears, and then he comes back, and then people are like, oh, he must suck because he hasn't played in a while. No, no, no. He just he starts blowing people up. So this is our probably premier guy player here at the store. Our guy regular. He's been gone for, what, six weeks? Something like that? Like since July? He was here before Evo, I think, and now he's gone. He hasn't memorized, like, he was trying to stay away for X amount of time. Oh, what a weirdo. What a weirdo. What a weirdie. All right. But anyway, this is our this is our best guy player in the shop. Uh, he's got a pretty good handle on uh, guys' uh, combos and uh, vortex options. Dallas repping that cami. So no button check. They're going to go right into it. Dallas is what I like to call, like, 
ham zone player. And right now, man, Aqualage is getting started. So Dallas will often try to fish for what he, you know, he he knows what the combo should be in his head, but there's not necessarily any a good amount of uh, hit confirms involved. So you'll see a lot of just spiral arrows just going getting ripped. No spiral arrows today though, because we're gonna put a P on it. We're gonna pack it up. That's a perfect for Aqualad, and that is the kind of offensive rushdown style you want to see from Guy. So there's that Bush Andrew, uh flip early on, trying to bait out a cannon spike. Dallas able to score some damage in there. Cami, high damage character. Great blocking by Dallas. Able to get under with low pro. Aqualad chasing him down with low strong in the corner. Overhead. Catches him not blocking in the sweep. Here's the mix up in the corner. Able to change it to a Bashinru drop at the last second. I really like that, that pressure that Aqualad's putting in there with that elbow. Putting it just outside the range to where Dallas wants to try to anti-air. But he can't get it because that hitbox is so good on the elbow. Here it comes. And he's going to get that. Oh, he's going to stop the target combo and get the reset with the overhead. Aqualad looking strong so far. Aqualad having fun. Saying, oh, yeah, I remember how to play Street Fighter. See what Dallas has got. So what Dallas wants to do here. Great air throw early on. Dallas making good work. Nice backdash by Aqualad. That overhead, though, is making so much damage. There's that random spiral arrow. Do we got to punish? No, sir. There's more spiral arrows. Another spiral arrow. Two for three so far in this round. Bushiro drop. Here comes the vortex. What do we got? Focus stack the bait out. Chase down to slide. There's the reversal. Into elbow. Elbow again. Into slide. And then he is just like punching Cami, Just wrecking her day. There we go. So Aqualad finding, finally finding an answer with that low, sh uh, low jab. So what Dallas wants to try to do here is he really wants to try to block and he's got to recognize these high-low mix-ups early on. Aqualad sitting on a full bar of super, going to try to convert that. That shoulder definitely is punishable. Great combo, Aqualad. Really sticking those target combos in there and finishing them, keeping it, keeping it very mixed up. So I mean, you know, I talk about Dallas needing to recognize high-low overheads, but uh, it's he's kept it different every time and that time coming with the overhead, Aqualad's going to take it. So being able to mix up your blocks with focus attacks, back dashes, those are all things you can do to try to alleviate pressure off of you if you're just getting beat down. So Aqualad will move on to round two. And then finally for our last game of round one, we have Blanca Cat versus Watson. So again, Blanca Cat, a top in the shop usual, regular. And Watson, our rising star here in the shop for Street Fighter. Been putting in the work with Sakura. I wish this game would go on sale. I do kind of like it. Pixel Piracy, it went on sale like one time, but it only went down to like like eight bucks. It was one of those things I where I was like, eh. Off I have one too. Oh, we should have. Okay. I have one too because I have it on my wish list or whatever. That's probably why I didn't pull the trigger on it. Yeah. Alright, here we go. Watson versus BC Bunkat. Abby Stillwell? No, sorry. Abby May. Abby Catlin. Man, I know too many Abbeys, apparently. Yeah, that, yeah, definitely not that. All right. Uh, I don't think they're going to button check, even though Blanca Cat is coming off no warm-up matches today. She's going to go straight into it. They might be button checking, because I don't think Watson got any uh, warm-ups either. Yeah, definitely button check. So for if you're new to button check, button checking is a throwback to the old-style arcade where you had hundreds of players every day bashing on buttons and you wanted to make sure all your stuff worked. Uh, but it's most importantly today because you have all these different joysticks, fight pads, controllers, what have you, with different configurations. So it's always important that you check your buttons. Make sure your hard punch is where you want it. Make sure you're sure you can macro is set how you like it. Nah, I'm just kidding. We don't roll that. So Watson versus... Or Sakura versus Blanca. Sakura rushed down. 
high damage character, Blanca a charged, more defensive style character, so Blanca gonna wanna sit back and try to make and try to exploit uh, Watson's uh, damage opportunities, namely if he tries to jump in. But I always have to say that Watson's discipline in jumping is really good. Even though he comes from Smash Brothers where most movement is done through jumping. Or well, lots of movement I should say. So Blanca early in with that slide. Blanca uh, with Blanca has no projectiles of his own, but a way to get around him. Good anti-air. Watson still trying to challenge that Blanca ball with that uh, crouching fierce punch. It's a great button, but it is something that will trade often with those Blanca balls. Both players poking back and forth right now. Blanca getting air there, that rainbow ball. That's the one that can be focused attack through. Going air to air here. Oh, missed input into Otoshi. And an EX ball challenging Watson's standing roundhouse. So. One of its Sakura's best tools is that stand roundhouse, that size 6 shoe. Wants to put it in there for big damage, got good range, plus 0 on block at max distance. Which I think it's always plus 0. Which means it cannot be punished. That's the one you want to try to focus heck through. So, Watson trying to challenge it with an anti-air opportunity. Gets it that time, and a good low forward into uppercut. Plus blonde cats. Okay, EX ball, That's that goes through fireball. It's good low medium. Oh, there's the rainbow ball trading again. Like I said, focus attack is how you're going to want to blow that up. Try to send a message to Blanca saying, hey, that's not cool. I really like, oh no, Blanca's patience was so good right there. Launcher, okay, into Otoshi setup. blanca has got an answer right here. Let's see if she does it. Oh, wow, a little bit of a fake overhead right there. Blanca in the corner, looking to try to get that damage range in there so she can pop Ultra 2. Oh, and a patient Watson wins the day. Sneaking up in there with those poke attacks, getting that overhead. Able to get a tick throw set up. So both players here looking to take that first round. Slide. Ooh, okay, so maybe Watson's figured out how to punish that slide when it's punished over this uh, block of unsafe range. There's the focus attack. No dash forward, though. Blanca trying to get away with those the Blanca balls. Want to try the short Blanca ball for the most recoil. Reaching in there with that low round or fierce punch. Good FADC in the throw. Frame trap with the fireball. Big size six. EX ball. Blanca almost in range for the sniper rifle. Oh, one it up ball right there. Got EX horizontal ball instead. Trying to chip away desperately. Really wants that damage. Oh, Watson dropping a link. Looking to try to hit confirm off those low shorts. Ooh, EX rainbow ball for the mix up. Oh, and tried to dash away in time. And Watson manages to catch with standing fierce punch. Watson goes up 1 0. So you definitely see uh, Blanca Cat when she picks Ultra 2, one of her uh, go-to strategies is to get you in chip range, retreat to full screen, and let it rip. So uh, one of the things that Blanca Cat needs to do is like, sh Blanca makes a, can make a lot of money off just being patient and saying, okay, look, if you jump, I'm gonna up ball you. If you're gonna fireball, I'm gonna see either I'm gonna slide under it or I'm going to EX ball through it. But it's basically a matter of the space you want to stand at is probably about the uh, two two square away block. If you can visualize the training room, big stun and a focus tech to finish him off. So Blonde Cat landing a bunch of counter hit damage in there with those crashing fierce punches and putting birds around Sakura's head. And there's up ball again, so it's like it kind of feels like Blanca might be guessing early on instead of just reacting. And Blanca being a charge character means you're gonna want to you're gonna want you're going to be blocking most of the time. You're gonna be holding down back, so there's no real reason for you to act first. Watson making all of his damage opportunities count. Great high low mix up there on the frame trap fireball gets the cross up and not sure of it. Blanca chance to react and just gets bopped right there. So that's probably the first round where Blanca hasn't started off with a ball of any type. Oh, tick throw set up. What's the mix up? Fireball over the top. Went for the went for the low mix up again. Blanca able to see it, but I confirm low forward and uppercuts, keeping Blanca in the corner. There's the rainbow ball to get out. That's very good. That's one of the best uses for it. Blanca just trying to run away, saying, "Stop kicking me, little girl." Good electricity. Wow, the first electricity. I just rem it just dawned on me that's the first electricity we've seen, and an FADC tick throw setup from Watson is gonna take it 
All right, so uh, gonna move into <laughs> this commentator sucks. <laughs> Thanks, GM two two nine one, wherever you are in the world. All right, so we're gonna move into round two here. We got Red CEO versus Ark, Riles Barkley versus Combat Kid, Steel Panther versus Aqualad, and Prophet Beast versus Watson. So those are what's got coming up here in round two of our tournament. Again, this is a double elimination tournament. So those you saw lose in round one, we will see them again on our loser side. And uh, our players are going to make it up. No thanks. Players are going to make their way up to the uh, screen. And I'll get the name set up here as soon as I get situated. Okay, so Red CEO, one of our top in the shop vets, has been repping Rolinto since day one of Ultra. So he has definitely been hitting the lab hard with Rolinto. Arc, coming off a win earlier against L. Alex, looking to keep his first. Top in the shop appearance alive in winner's side. And we're gonna do a quick we're gonna get a quick button check here again. So red CEO holding it down. Again, you are watching Top in the Shop. Appreciate you guys playing along with us at home. If you want to check out that brackets in today's title of today's broadcast. Shout outs to our viewers in chat, GM2291. Thanks for the feedback. Him Nifty. Aaron Alkire. Saying hi from beautiful Montana. And Crypt Rider, aka Jesse Sims. Carjack Jesse. You can check him out on our DayZ streams. All of his shenanigans. So our button checks are wrapped up. We're good to go into it. So it'll be interesting to see how Ark is able to adjust to uh, Red CEO's Relinto. As I, I feel like he's a pretty, pretty strong Relinto. What's up, Jay Slow? Jay Slow, one of our top Smash Brother players in our scene, holding it down. Hashtag Pool Party. Hashtag Kara's Ultimate Game. Nah, Jay Slow putting in the work with Fei Long. So. Red CEO, pretty familiar with the guy matchup, thanks to uh, to, to uh, young Alex, Aqualad, trying to go to work early on, dropping a link. And Ark going in pretty relentless with these jump ins. Red CEO knows those anti airs with a great standing, or fierce kick, or sorry, roundhouse. Ultra trying to come say hi, what's the response? Trying to get the one frame, roundhouse to low medium into Rekka's. Catches Ark not blocking, unless that was Chip. I didn't see, I looked away for a second. Okay, it was Chip. Let's see what the adjustment Ark has got going in game. So, looking early on for that air grab, expecting a player to jump. Focus on the uh, Rekus is not safe. He's got to burn bars. Here comes the mix up game over the top. Gets the reset into EX Stinger. Already 70 or 60% of, li of guy's life completely gone. And these matches are going so quick. We're only 70 and in. Wake up, Ultra. What's Red CEO got? Just going to let it happen. Arc trying to get a little bit of momentum. Good EX uppercut. Trying to chase him down with the run overhead. And Red CEO kind of just letting it happen. Maybe kind of trying to test, trying to see what he's capable of doing. And the grab with the grenade under the chin for the win. Red CEO take game number one. Said that these games are moving very fast. Can only briefly kind of talk about some of the mix-up game that Relento's trying to do. A lot of that pogo in a cross-up, so are gonna have to recognize. Like I, I say, like Relento is playing against Relento is definitely a testament to how well you can block. Great block right there. Managed to get the cross-up. Got out of that setup with minimal damage. Here's the hard knockdown. Neutral jump. I really like that as an option. 
Relento poking back with those jabs. Those jabs not chainable. You do have to combo them, link them. EX Machine really Oh, he should have just let it go. He, I, hopefully he's made, he's made a mental note that uh, Red CO willing to hold back. Maybe open him up for those foot grabs. Off the wall gets the roundhouse. Trying to stuff it with the medium kick. Red CO dropping that one framer. Going for that roundhouse. The medium link is a one frame. Oh, goes for the overhead and Arc blocks it. That is that. That is the classic, or the new classic, high damage output Relento that we've seen made popular with Nemo. But I will have to tell you this, since day one, Red CO has been playing that. Stinger trying to build a little bit of meter. Something he's been trying to put into his uh, arsenal of tricks when he's full screen trying to build some meter. He wants those two bars to make his wreck is safe. Here comes Red CO, gets the mix up into the... Uh, Oh, excuse me, into the reset. Man, I'm dying. You grab me an amp out of there, Abby? I need to get some liquid injected hype into me. Thank you. Art gonna go to super. He's gonna catch him. My goodness. What's Art got? Just do it. Yes! Get it! Oh, we went into ultra! Chip, please! Oh, and Red CEO is going to string him up. So, uh, a great. <laughs> a great sequence right there uh, by Ark trying to make a comeback. Red CEO will take it 2 0. Oh, man. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right, so that's our first game for round two here. Red CEO go up 2-0 over Ark. We will see Ark again, though. Uh, Riles Barkley versus Combat Kid coming up, uh, coming up next, followed by Steel Panther at Aqualad and Prophet Beast versus Watson. So you're watching Top in the Shop September 16, 2014 here at Pew Pew Card and Game. Questions or comments for me? Want to let me know how much I suck in commentary? Hit me up in that chat. Also on Twitter at Pew Pew CNG. Also host, we also host Wednesday Night Legacy for Magic the Gathering here as well. And Friday Night Magic for your standard decks. Also a new event we're trying to get rolling here. If you're also into Magic the Gathering is EDH, Elder Dragon Highlander on Thursday. So check us out on Facebook for updates on those events. Right now we got Combat Kid versus Riles Barkley. Ken versus Ken Mirror Match. So the mirror match, always difficult. Some some people like the mirror match. Some people loathe it. I'm kind of in the middle. But the pace of this match will kind of be set. Judging by these two players' skill, who's going to throw the least amount of fireballs and how many uppercuts are going to land? And then how and how well will the other player be able to punish? So Combat Kid in the green, Riles Barkley in the alternate three outfit, the Alpha Ken. The long hair. So both players right now trying to fill each other out with these fireballs. Combat Kid poking back. The jumping light punch trying to get in there. Saw a lot of jumping light punch from Riles Barkley last week. Oh, uppercuts missing right there on both sides. What's the punish? Go for focus attack. No good. The X fireball. Here's the jump in. Oh, target combo. I like it. Big fire uppercut. Oh, no punish. Combat Kid trying to keep uh, a more honest ground game here. Oh, big opportunity there. Oh, Ultra is the other side going to catch. Oh, it's just the tip. Down to Pixels. And an uppercut. Riles Barkley pulling it out. Man, that was a nail biter going for Chip right there. Exciting first uh, round between these two guys. There's the step kick from Combat Kid. A great frame trap opportunity from that low fierce punch. And the Tatsu's just hanging around. Thank you, Combat or Combo Fiend. Nerfing that. Focus Crumple. Light DP. Name of the game. Low forward. Hard Tatsu's. Good stuff by Riles Barkley. 
Ooh, gonna eat that EX fireball. Here comes Combat Kid. Low forward fireball all day, every day. And he punished with a sweep. Hard knockdown with the cross up. Here's the punish. Oh! Stuffing him. Now watch out for the EX uppercut. There it is. Super, did he push a button? What's the punish? Ultra. You can't ask for better punish than that, ladies and gentlemen. Combat Kid answering right back. I'm going to call it right now. Every single round will end in some form of an uppercut. Be it ultra, normal. They'll uppercut each other with their feet if they have to. And I say that and they both let hurricane kicks rip. They're just like, screw you announcer, you don't know anything about this game. Or can. So, I will say this. The first character that learns how to crouching fierce punch those jump-ins is going to win this game. Because there's a lot of jump in, and uh, as a Shoto, classically you want to try to DP those with a light DP. Uh, Ken's got a lot of invincibility on his medium punch version. Right now, Combat Kid had has the corner control. Riles Mark letting it rip, but another uppercut going to let rip. Punished by another uppercut. Big focus stack getting blown up by EXDP. No Kara throws. Oh! Both characters full screen. Who's going to feel the fireball? Riles Barkley saying, I'm playing that third strike. I'll punch the fireball away. But unfortunately, we are 10 years before ahead of that. Combat Kid going to take game number one. So again, good set by both these guys so far. Again, you know, it's going to come down to a game of nerves between these two players. Who's going to let DPs rip? Riles Barkley got a couple other characters he can try out. He's got his selector over character uh, select screen. So we're going to see what he's going to pull out here. I'm thinking maybe Akuma. Okay, Ryu. Nope. Gukin, Akuma, Siverper. How much was that game? Alright, I'll buy it. It's sold. Alright, so Riles Barkley going to Akuma. So Akuma also has the classic tools of the Shotos with the DP, Fireball, Hurricane Kick, in addition to his Demon Flip, Air Fireball, and Teleport, but at the cost of lower health. So he's going to teleport right into the fray. Combat Kid looking to link a couple jabs together. Chain a couple jabs together, I should say. Tatsu to build meter. Combat Kid in the corner. Oh, misses a DP. Maybe a roulette that zero should rip a little too high on the on the stick. Resulted in a jump. And uh, I got to say, Combat Kid's ability to use Fireball is pretty good. As far as knowing, like, kind of recognizing the spacing of when to do it and when not, and when not to throw Fireball. Oh, looking for punish that low forward. A couple things you convert into there. Namely, Tatsu is what you want. Catches a sweep, looking across with jumping medium kick. So classic Shoto game is we both throw fireballs until you jump. Good punish. And then you jump and I DP you, and then you get reset. So something uh, newer players really want to get accustomed to early on. We saw Akuma try to let a uh, ultra rip right there. Didn't work out. It gets juggled into a frame trap fireball. Frame trap, of course, means you have to block it. If you push a button, you will get hit. In that case, Riles Barkley didn't have an opportunity, or didn't have a choice. Oh, accidental taunt. Combat Kid on the offense right now, trying to get across a EX Tatsu. Whoops, lost my string really quick. Right now, Combat Kid pretty much in control of this. Great read. EXDP just standing over Kuma, challenging him. And Combat Kid will take it 2-0. So, good round between both those guys. Again, these are our new player, new players tonight at top in the shop. Riles Barkley returning from last week, doing a stellar job. We'll see more of him later on in the tournament. Steel Panther versus Aqualad coming up next. So, Combat Kid cutting his way across the bracket right now. He will be facing off against Red CEO in round three of Winterside. So following Steel Panther, we have Prophet Beast versus Watson. So Steel Panther and Aqualad, I want to say, I was safe to say this is, this is becoming a, a classic matchup in Top in the Shop as they often have to play each other uh, in tournament. And again, Aqualad hasn't been around, so Aqualad's got just enough trickiness, just enough dirt on his guy where he can really sneak in there and take a win, even from some of our better players here. 
Steel Panther, definitely one of them. <laughs> Dude, I liked I liked it, man. I was like, oh, he got that super. He's in there. All right. So Steel Panther, man, he has been grinding away at Street Fighter every single day. He is online taking lives, building up those internet points. And now he's about to do the same to Aqualad. So Steel Panther told me today he beat the number one evil Ryu on Xbox Live. So he's feeling good about that. And we got no time for button check, ladies and gentlemen. We're going right into it. Steel Panther, Akuma, the king of the Vortex, trying to get that hard knockdown started early on with the sweeps in a mix-up. Aqualad trying to find a way in. Steel Panther able to fight back with those low strong into fireballs. Teleport away. So one thing the Steel Panther definitely has to get away from the potential Vortex of Guy is to teleport. EX Fireball to cover the retreat. Here comes the overhead. So Aqualad definitely respecting his opponent this time. Not getting so button happy after the first overhead. Choosing instead to reserve. DP trade with that dive kick. Kuma has a couple tricks of his own to change the jump arc. Namely that dive kick and the fireball. And just not enough damage. Not enough life, excuse me. That slide is going to be punished. Yeah. So Aqualad trying to get a little bit of momentum started his way. Steel Panther has had enough with it blowing it up with the DP. Here come the demon flip. Steel Panther sit on a full stick of butter. FADC to make it safe. Double throw. Aqualad getting tossed around like a rag doll right now. The dive kick to Chase. Unfortunately missed hit confirm. Gonna give Aqualad a chance to get out. That jumping light punch. I think that was a missed fireball. But it ended up uh, in Steel Panther's favor. And there is no rest for the wicked. Steel Panther on a march right now. Not even letting Aqualad get a chance to breathe. Aqualad may, might be hovering over character select. He's been playing with poison quite a bit before his uh, temporary hiatus. He's going to go straight into it. Oh, DP opportunity. Oh, too early. Aqualad had a good chance for a good punish right there. All right, so that low medium kick that you see from Steel Panther, he is uh, low profiling underneath Aqualad's uh, elbows. Oh, the bait! So that's one really strong thing you can do to get around guys' uh, jumping opportunities is just to hit low medium kick on a, as a Shoto. Great Tatsu, break up that EX fireball. Steel Panther loses life and a bar. Oh, a mix-up opportunity. Catches him jumping away. Here's Aqualad's chance. Looking for the grab in the corner. Gets the overhead. That's going to be punished. Here comes Steel Panther now. Dropping it with the teardrop. Into the dive kick. Catches him pressing a button. So a little bit too early on that anti-air. Results in a counter hit into Aqualad's defeat. But Aqualad coming back into his own. Here's the dirt. Here's the filth. Gosh, just standing over him and Steel Panther making so much damage. Too far away. <laughs> Teleporting out of danger. Overhead, Steel Panther figuring it out. This is where now you do not want to be here, uh, Aqualad, in the corner. Steel Panther doesn't sweat it one bit. So, guy needs to uh, maybe... Okay, really got to take advantage. He's got a couple damage opportunities. He really wants to maximize the damage opportunities. Demon, not going to hit with the cross-up light kick. Got to be so careful trying to jump out. And Steel Panther will take it. Man, these are just knockout. Like, this is just slugfest right now. Oh, sorry. Steel Panther did not take Aqualad. Managed to get in. Trading with that uh, Crouching Fierce. Oh, let the Tatsu rip. Here comes the Vortex. Standard Akuma stuff. 50% of Guy's life already vanished. Good bait. Oh, doesn't get the conversion. Very good elbow. So now Aqualad. Oh, feeling the rust right there. These, I mean, this is just when you haven't played in a while, you're going to drop stuff like this. Trying to get out of the corner. Steel Panther backing up to a safe range where he said, now you're going to have to come get me. You have to deal with a fireball minefield. But I say fireball minefield. I'm just going to low medium kick you and win. All right. So Steel Panther. Played a very strong set. Aqualad's shown a little bit of rust, but we will see him again. 
And we are going to move on here with uh, Prophet Beast versus Watson. So these are two of our, again, newer guys. Definitely hope Aqualad comes back and plays, man. He is like, he's one of our solid younger players here. He took a little bit of a break over the summer, but that's okay. He's, uh, hopefully he comes back to the game with a renewed interest and ready to throw down. So Prophet Beast versus Watson. Sakura versus Evil Ryu. <laughs> I was wondering what you were laughing at. I was too. Yeah. All right, so Watson versus Evil Ryu. So Prophet Beast, I saw him playing Evil Ryu and Balrog earlier. Did have a he did have a buy. So I mean, I mean, I'm I am excited to see what he's able to bring to the table. Watson, no stranger to the Evil Ryu matchup. He had a quick button check in. Watson himself also learning some of Evil Ryu. Definitely knows the kind of damage and burst opportunity he can get. I am most interested to see how Prophet Beast's uh, low forward fireball game is and if he is able to uh, drop in uh, any FADC action into big damage uh, Evil Ryu combos. Watson also been working very hard with Shampoo Loops too. Man, I'm going to get so hyped if he manages to drop a Shampoo Loop. He's, been, he, he's also been working. I would say... Next to Steel Panther, Watson, easily one of the hardest working guys in our Street Fighter scene right now, trying to level up his players. Proof that practice and dedication will get you better at this game. So here we go. Sakura versus Evil Ryu. So Evil Ryu, superior fireball game. Watson sending a message early on. Don't jump in on me with my low, with my, uh, low fierce. Prophet Beast, a little too early on that punish. So Sakura gonna have to poke back and forth. These guys are matching colors, by the way. That's kind of neat. Ooh! Oh! I wanted to see the evil Ryu magic right there. Gets another chance with that axe kick. Here comes Sakura. Oh, EXO Toshimi. I think she wanted Ultra right there. Man, Prophet Beast definitely uh, has the has the the basic evil Ryu stuff down. Here comes Watson though, looking for a mix-up. Bates out the DP. Prophet Beast out of jail full screen so right now evil Ryu with the life he doesn't need to do anything too risky coming in with those axe kicks the heavy one is minus three on blocks you can punish it but it is kind of masked and right there stop the yard stopping so hard that it's knocking those people out of their seats in the background so mash starting out just the same way it is before wake up throw Wake up DP, no bars, and just going to keep it simple that time. So he missed the punish previous. I like the adjustment. Keep it simple. Tournament jitters are real. Jumping in with medium kick. Profit Beast working hard. Red focus into another axe kick. Interesting. Wow, good, good links. Nice. Nice. Profit Beast. Welcome to Oak Grove. Yo, but real talk. Crouching forward to axe kick is not real. Yeah, but real talk, fuck the <laughs> Eagles, you know? Yeah, for real, definitely. Nah, I'm just, man, so Prophet Beast up one game now. So it looked like towards the end of that last match, he definitely able to uh, calm himself down. And, uh, you know, I, to be honest with you, I don't know if Sakura has a good option to punish some of those uh, blocked axe kicks. He doesn't have a three-frame reversal. I guess, yeah. Man, Prophet Beast all over the place right now. But all Watson really needs is a good axe kick off the juggle. All Watson needs is a good mix-up right here. Make this count. Big focus attack. Level 2. Plus on block. Great link right there. That's the one that Watson did not want to drop. He's feeling good about that. I guess you could backdash out of it. It would probably be the safest thing. Uh, yeah, prob probably. Uh, I mean, backdash is all right. Oh, we'll try to chase down the, t the uh, focus attack. Man, Prophet Beast is so dangerous in the corner right now. Risky jump by Watson. Prophet Beast, the being Ryu, he can basically space it out two squares away and says, if you try to jump out, I'm going to take you down. Watson detecting a throw. Oh, reset. Yeah, that was very good. Man, I really wish Watson would get in there with the mix-ups. 
Prophet Beast not scared of a little bit of FADC action. Oh, misses the damage opportunity himself. He's at one, he's at two bars, so a focus attack right here off a low forward fireball will kill Sakura. Oh no, he missed the low ultra, the low uh, fierce punch from Watson. Here comes Prophet Beast on the cross up and gets standing, far standing fierce punch, catching the back end of that EXDP. Prophet Beast on match point. So Watson got a block and punish right here. Oh, Red Focus getting a little too hot on the buttons. Prophet Beast, man, he's looking dangerous right now. Both characters full screen. Here comes the shotgun that you fireball for three hits. Can eat up Sakura's fireballs and good stuff on Watson. Not trying to challenge any more fireballs. Prophet Beast trying to, man, he's hitting every string in those axe kicks, man. That looks like early Daigo right there. Where he was just axe kicking, axe kicking, axe kicking. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, we'll see how he uh, adjusts. But right now, Evil Ryu sitting on a full super with Ultra. And uh, definitely can kill right here. Can he get the whole thing? Red focus into Ultra. I like it. It's not going to kill, though. Damage scaling's real. It's going to put out about 3% after this. Please don't kill. Okay, about 5%. Wake up, Ultra. There's a fist out. Is it going to be in time? Evil Ryu to the other side and Crouching Fierce Punch. So good stuff. Prophet Beast looking really good early on. Good stuff to both those guys. That's going to that's gonna wrap up our round two for tournament today. And we're going to move on to round three, where we have Red CEO versus Combat Kid, followed by Steel Panther and Prophet Beast. So after we finish this, we'll go into winner's finals, and in the win that winner of that will move on to grand finals, and we're going to jump back down and finish out our loser side of the bracket. So thank you for watching this week's edition of Top of the Shop. I'm your host, Robbie Vota, here at Pew Pew Card and Game. Come out and see us. Look us up on Facebook at Facebook slash Pew Pew Card and Game. Hit us up on Twitter at Pew Pew CNG. Combat Kid made it this far with Ken, switching over to the classic training partner of Ryu, so a dark versus light match here. Uh, I lost my doge. That's sad. You lose, don't ever lose your doge. I'll add it. We've had doge. I'll add it really quick. You have. You're way better. Are you kidding me? Alright, we'll get it later. Okay, so Red CEO, like we said, we also saw him playing Relento earlier. Evil Ryu was a strong secondary pick for him for a long time until Relento came out. So we'll see how his Candy Cane Evil Ryu is going to face off against Combat Kid here. Dive kick. So Combat Kid definitely was repping the low forward fireball game a lot a lot as Ken, and that is only going to get better with Ryu, as it is now a true Urblock string than it was before. Crumple, just going to get sweep. So Red CEO definitely uh, has that back dash built into him from Rolinto, so we're not seeing any forward dashes. Dive kick to blow it up. You want low forward fireball right there, FADC. Pick up that combo. Big damage opportunity. Oh, went for the one framer with the low strong. It's a one-frame link. Two frames if you put the jab in. Shakunetsu try to fight back against this fireball game. Shakunetsu is a command input. Let's your fireball hit three times if you hit the, uh, the hard punch version. Something that Evil Ryu has access to as well as Akuma. Ooh, EX Tatsu stay above. Red CO, no answer. Red CO looking at 40%. A little bit of a Sako combo right there. And the, the mental damage right now is huge. If you would have got that, that would have stunned. But he sucks. He deserves to be DP'd. He deserves to be DP'd. 
Combat Kid now. Good life advantage. Evil Ryu does have a lot of the same tools as normal Ryu, but uh, at a cost to life. Now, Evil Ryu did get a, a health buff a little bit. And Ultra, great low Fierce Punch. That's what I like to see. The Mexican DP. And it's only called Mexican DP because because some of the uh, arcade systems that were uh, shipped out to Mexico, they would have uh, faulty sticks on them, so you couldn't do a short you can input. So Crouching Hard Punch became the new anti-air. And it's still just as good. It's got a great active hitbox. You just got to space it. No, it's really called, they really call it Mexican DP. I've heard it called that before on like Wednesday Night Fights, so yeah. Nothing uh, politically incorrect about it. Red CEO trying to stick to a fireball game. Here comes Combat Kid over the top. DP, get me another one. You can get two of them in the corner. Combat Kid putting... Oh! Got the link. Man, that was risky. I hate jump hard attacks into Ultra, but Red CEO doesn't care. Welcome to die. Not enough to kill. Combat Kid still has a chance here. Definitely has a chance here. Pretty much, I mean, as much health as Evil Ryu does have, uh, Ryu definitely has tools to get a kill, even more so now. Life chipping away with 38 seconds to play. Oh my goodness. Oh, he baited. He went out. Because, now, what Red CO was looking for right there, what he was looking for right there, and I guarantee it, he was looking for low forward because uh, myself, I do a lot of, like, I, when somebody hits the ground, I want to be able to frame trap them. So Red CO, combat kid going up one, one point. And that read just did not pay off. That DP just got blown up. Combat Kid. Man, these newcomers coming in and beating up on people. Damn, the crowd popping off. The salt's real. The sodium is so real. The Grain Valley invaders coming in. Trying to take it away from Oak Grove. All right. Here comes the pipe. So I'll be interested to see how Combat Kid able to adjust to Relento. Of course, in, cl in tournament rules for Street Fighter, if you win a match, you cannot change uh, your character. The loser may change as per usual. So two out of three set, Combat Kid looking to send Red CEO to loser side. Red CEO looking to defend his top in the shop. Greatness. Red CEO has a couple top in the shops under his belt. The only person to ever beat me in top in the shop. Alright, so here comes Red CO. Early on. Roll under the fireball. Great anti-fireball tech and a reset. The combo was dropped, but Combat Kid let it hit. Looking for DP, I think just got jabs. Trying to get out of the corner. Red CO, oh, okay, great, great block on the reset. That that was that was the exclamation point on the momentum right there from Melinto. Had he gotten that EX uh, overhead with the cane, it would have stunned Combat Kid outright. And not even needing the stun, Red CO. Oh, there's no brakes on the Rolento train in this should be banned wizard outfit. I don't know, chat. I would like to hear your guys' opinion. Should wizard Rolento be banned? You're a wizard, Rolento. Thanks, Hagrid. There's the reset. Gets the whole thing. Oh, another reset. Dizzy. Yeah. Gross, disgusting, sick. Put it away. I don't want to see any more of it. Okay, Combat Kid says never die. Never say die. Looking for Chip the roll so much. The sequence right there from Rolento. He went for two resets and got them both. Combat Kid being like, when did they put this character in the game? So it looks like Combat Kid going to the drawing board. Maybe we're going to see Ken Masters. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you gotta put a little fire on the shore you can. So now that Red CEO ties it up 1 1. Alright, so let's see if Ken Masters. Got what it takes to defeat Relento here. Good DP early on, blowing up that slide. Combat Kid keeping him out. Red CEO trying to figure out what he's capable of. Here comes Relento. Huge damage off that jump roundhouse into a full combo. 
what Combat Kid wants to do here. I mean, like I said, this is a testament to blocking. If you can read the high-low, then you can basically beat Relento. And you use the high-low, it goes high-low, high-low, mix-up. And then you got to know when to punish with that DP. And right now, it's unfortunate, but you can definitely see the holes of matchup knowledge that CEO is poking through Combat Kid's game. Let's see if he can adjust here. Red CEO now a match point. And of course, Red CEO, no stranger to the Ken matchup if you're watching some of our casuals earlier today. And the thing is, is Red CEO is like, I just don't know how to outpoke Ken. Well, he's doing it right now. And Combat Kid trying to keep it basic. Trying to stay away in Relento. Usually Relento is the one that says, I want to stay away from you. I don't want to get knocked down or put in the corner. And Ken, Ken on the other side of that. Hop over, burn a bar, why not? Plenty to work with. Oh, I think he wanted Ultra right there. String him up. And he's just going to go in and keep it simple. So, like I said, that's one of those things where Combat Kid is going to want to probably take a look at the Relento matchup and uh, add something to his notes. But a great run. For Combat Kid, making it all the way to round three before hitting loser's side. And Red CEO will take it. So coming up next, we've got Steel Panther versus Prophet Beast. Alright, dude, you want to commentate on this one? <laughs> Jesse? <laughs> it just like doesn't matter what it is. It goes, yeah. oh hey. It has nothing to do with anything. Yes, <laughs> oh hey. Alright, so joining me now on commentary is Red CEO. We're going to take a look at this Prophet Beast for Steel Panther. So we mentioned, or Red CEO mentioned early on that those block strings uh, into the uh, Axe Kicks are not safe and that he's going to get into a rude awakening when he goes against Steel Panther. So we're going to see how Steel Panther adjusts to that early on. Yeah, well I used to play a lot of Evil Ryu against Steel Panther. Every time I do crouching forward and Axe Kick, I get DP'd. And uh, that didn't happen at all in the Sakura match and he kind of got comfortable with it. Yeah, absolutely. Right now, Steel Panther looking very comfortable. I mean, I mean, let's be, let's be, let's face it. Steel Panther was talking today how he beat the number one Evil Ryu online. Yeah. So he's probably not sweating us a whole lot, but nonetheless, Prophet Beast. I mean, he's he's he looks strong. True. Steel Panther, scoop it up round number one. I think uh, Prophet Beast. Is going to be in for a real surprise when he gets Voodoo Demon for the first time. That's true. I like the double DP right there. Good stuff. That was I very really, good. I really got to give Prophet Kid credit on the. Uh, he definitely knows Evil Ryu stuff. Now, this is, this is the first time out to this this tournament. It is one of those things like you know, tournament jitters could be a definite issue, um, and just overall playing against you know so many people who play offline all the time. And that makes me really nice. glad to say that, that we have a, an active community offline. And yeah, Steel Panther knocking in a stun to put away game number one. I don't know how much uh, Akuma experience Prophet Beast has under his belt, like the matchup, as far as that goes. But Steel Panther's a lot of evil Ryu matchup knowledge. I think Prophet Beast is making a hundred million dollar play right here. Because he's going to switch over to Balrog, I think. <laughs> He's changing colors. The uh, camouflage. Okay, so Steel Panther's <laughs> changing colors. Prophet Beast going. Yeah, I did see him play Balrog earlier. Let's see what he goes to. Stick with it. Stick with it. I, I like it. I, I respect I it. Like it. I like it. I like it. Shout out to everybody watching. Top of the shop here. We're on round three. We're going into uh, winners finals after this match. Followed up, and then we're going to scoop things up with our uh, losers side. Right now, Prophet Beast trying to make it to that winners finals against Steel Panther. Profit Beast could make a lot of money by playing slower and then chasing, like, dash, using Evil Ryu's really good dash forward to chase down the jump back fireball game and just sweep him on in. Yes, yes. Sweep is a great, great tool to use against the jump back fireballs, especially if you're spaced correctly. 
I make a lot of money on that when I Evil Ryu against his Akuma. Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, Evil Ryu has got a great, a better sweep than uh, than normal Ryu, so it works out. I think the problem is a lot of Evil Ryu's think that they have to play flashy to win. Like if they don't get the big combo, they're not gonna win. Right. I have that problem myself. I know. Good block right there. Not by. Oh, I love the there DP. We go. That's what I'm talking about. Slow it down. Low forward fireball. Just low forward fireball all day. Uh, see? You give me an hour with this guy, I'll make him stop low forward axe hitting all day. I was about to say, I'm surprised <laughs> Steel Panther hasn't taught him that already. Well, as you know, he really hasn't had an opportunity to. Steel Panther's been in the driver's seat for all these games. Here comes That's all right, Profit see, Beast. He's been downloaded. The he next is. time he crouching forwards, he's going to get DP'd. I don't know if he's going to get a chance. Yeah, sir. <laughs> I don't know if he's going to get a chance. This game, this game it's in Aaron's head. <laughs> Steel Panther's head, he knows. He's downloaded it. He's adapting. Steel Panther on match point here, looking to put Prophet Beast in the loser side. And, uh, I mean, that's the thing is, like, Steel Panther, he is a control player, man. Oh, yeah. And he controls the match. Uh, he controls the pace of the match. Oh, he does, for sure. In, in Street Fighter, the way, much like how he does in, in Magic uh, Gathering. See, I'm surprised he didn't get DP'd on that. All right, so yeah, so he is so he controls the match. So it's like Steel Panther has the ability to switch gears into this defensive. Oh no, he dropped it. He think he wanted the axe kick combo right there. Uh, I will say this though, straight up Ultra Two would have killed him. Maybe he was a little bit too excited about the crumple. Prophet Beast is not going to be in time. Going to get out of the way. The fireball keeping him safe, and Steel Panther going to walk up. He still has a chance here. Got to take the block. Good low. EX Fireball to chew up the chip damage. Steel Panther takes it 2-0, so good stuff to Prophet Beast right there. Man, that was, uh, he had, had an opportunity. Every single one of my crouching forward axe kicks. You pussy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, crouching forward axe kick, okay, here comes the DP. No, no, you should take the chip. All right, so we are going into winner's finals. Red CEO versus Steel Panther, and then we're going to drop down to our loser side. Oh, excuse me. Loser side and uh, run it all the way back to grand finals. So coming up next, we've got Red CEO versus Steel Panthers winners finals. Class the classic. You guys gonna get that uh, black spray paint sometime this week? I just need like a couple dollars from you both, like two each, two American dollars. All right. I think it's like four bucks for a can of best great man. Red CEO versus Steel Panther. This is the classic top in the shop match. I don't think we have the stereo set up for actual Steel Panther for this match. Uh, Steel Panther, he's not called, oh, it's not elimination, so that's actually news to me that the Steel Panther only comes out when it's elimination match. So, winner's final, three out of five set, Evil Ryu versus Akuma. I'm not really quite too sh sure about uh, Red CEO's choice to go Evil Ryu early on. I think his Relento is stronger in this particular matchup, but we shall see. Like I said, three out of five, plenty of time to work with stuff. Winner of this moves on to grand finals. So, expect to see kind of a... Uh, uh, zoning game, kind of early on, uh, transition, and whoever gets the first win is going to go ham. Good back dash, make it safe. Both players right now trying to figure out what spaces the other player is going to commit to. Man, the cross-up Tatsu, the day one dirt. He's been making money off that today. Steel Panther unable to convert from that far away off those jabs. The dive kick's coming in, trying to blow up any opportunity that uh, Red Seal is looking for on anti-air. Manages to nail one in there with a hard uppercut. EX Shoryu to answer back. Steel Panther on the warpath. Not quite enough to crumple. Here's the mix. What's the mix-up? Nothing. Going to let it sit. Not quite a crumple. Gets thrown. Level 1 focus attack is not safe. Air fireballs now. Trying to get a little bit of room to breathe. Steel Panther with a slight life lead. No hit confirm off that EX axe stick overhead. Great mix up and a jump short cross up to land and back. Red CO take round one. 
Man, that EX Axe can just snap out there. It is an overhead. You do have to block it high. The other Axe Six from Evil Re, you do not have to. You can block those low, as we've seen earlier tonight in the tournament. So great use of the dive kick by Steel Panther right there to try to blow up anti-air uh, opportunities by uh, Red CEO. Jump medium, no conversion off that low strong. There's anti-air, good overhead hitbox with that crouch fierce. Oh, no punish on that DP. Had a chance to low forward fireball that. Here comes Red CEO just trying to bait something out and gets away with minimal, with minimal punish. Good string right there by Red CEO, not getting blown up to Steel Panther. A little bit hesitant to let a DP fly. Red CEO trying to bait something out, looks like, with that focus stack. Here comes Steel Panther. Normal, oh, normal jump cross up with the Tatsu. Red CEO able to block correctly. Fireball to keep him out of danger. And Red CEO down into dangerous chip territory, gets the DP off the Demon Palm. Must have got it right before it started up. And the jump strong. Ultra in the corner is going to be enough to kill. Red CEO is going to take game number one. Now Steel Panther dangerous with his, dangerous with his Akuma. Also very dangerous with, with a Sagat as well. He's got some kind of tricky Sagat stuff that can kind of throw you off balance if you're not used to seeing it. It looks like we're going to go straight, back, straight into it. Red CEO up one game. So again, a Vortex character like Evil Ryu, or like, uh, so excuse me, Akuma, wants to achieve a hard knockdown and puts you in a constant state of guessing with 50-50 mix-ups that always result in another hard knockdown. So a hard knockdown for every character in this game is a throw and a sweep. An Akuma sweep, one of the best, comes out very far, has very good range, can be comboed after the, the, the Tatsu. But, uh, but in a standard Akuma combo, uh, you cannot end your combo in a sweep because uh, it does not work on the Shotos. So you've got to end it in a DP. Here comes the mix-up. Empty jump into throw. Teched away by Red CEO. Anti-air trade. DP, no FADC forward. Evil Ryu trying to hold on to it. Ryan trying to hold on to that meter. Almost sitting on a super. Akuma with no meter, but he's not going to even need it. Far standing roundhouse scoops him up. And the Tatsu to come in. Steel Panther sniffs it out the sweep. Evil Ryu sitting on a full stick of butter. Low forward fireball is going to result in probably 50% of Akuma's life if he's able to hold the combo. Good hit and firm setup right there. Can he get the whole thing? Axe kick, it doesn't work in the corner. Body falls out on the other side. It's unfortunate. It's two bars gone. Trying to chase down those fireballs. Teched away on the dash forward. Steel Panther with the first time to get an offense going. Empty jumps. Gets scooped. There's that Tatsu, man. That's a new Tatsu, man. That's kind of dirty. That was like... That had to have been guessed absolutely perfect that time. Ooh, trying to sneak in there with an anti-air. No crumple. Great dash back, though. If you would have dashed forward, that could have resulted in damage. Red CO oh, just on a warpath. Here comes the demon. Tatsu gets him to safety. Red C. Oh! Steel Panther not out yet. Fortunately, he dropped that low forward. Yeah, it looks like he's losing a little bit of a game plan right now because Red CEO is rushing down. There is that sweep under the air fireball. We still got tagged on the other one. FADC forward. That is definitely not safe. Minus five after the ultra change. Huge combo opportunity. Kuma already down 50% life. There's the dive kick to blow up the anti-air. Oh, dropped it. I'm sorry, he dropped the combo but then picked it back up. Kuma trying to push a button in there. DP trying to sniff out a sweep. Red CEO are pretty good at reading uh, players' tendencies of when they're going to use normals and being able to DP him. We saw him drop around early to uh, Prophetic Beast. And a standing roundhouse anti-air puts Red CEO up 2-0. So now Steel Panther threatening to get kicked in the loser's side. I mean, most of Steel Panther's uh, jumps are fairly calculated as far as when spaces and stuff is considered. He really hasn't gotten DP'd out of too many jump-ins. And most of those jump-ins are the demon flip. 
dive kick, fireball combo, so good standing round. I think he won his far standing roundhouse, got the axe kick instead for two hits. Woo, carry throw. Great cross up. He's going to get the whole thing. That is evil Ryu damage. Man, that, that and then combo did multiple, or did a little bit of mental combo damage right there. Steel Panther had two bars to burn, deciding to hang on to it. Oh my goodness! Crouch jab, just giving Evil Ryu a haircut, taking a couple inches off the back. Red Seal looking very comfortable right now. Steel Panther got to change up his game a little bit. This Evil Ryu, man, this is the most explosive Evil Ryu that I've seen Red Seal play in recent weeks. I mean, he's making a lot of good, uh, the coins are just coming up heads for him so far. He's got a couple of good cross-ups that Steel Panther, unfortunately, just was unable to block correctly, and it's led to a 2-0 win. I mean, pretty convincingly. Went for an overhead right there, Steel Panther to blow it up. The target combo back from Red Sea. Oh, here's a chance for big damage. Gets a fireball. Uh, rushed it a little bit too, fa too fast. Wanted to just stand Fierce Punch. And Steel Panther again getting crossed up. Here's the sweep in the corner. Dangerous place to be for Red CEO. Has a chance if he doesn't push it. And an EX overhead. And Red CEO will take it 3-0. So we will see Steel Panther back again. And Red CEO will move into Grand Finals. So... Thank you for watching. So far, that is that was winners' finals. We will see Steel Panther again in losers' finals. But until then, we've got loser side bracket coming up next. We've got Watson versus L. Alex, Aqualad versus Trevor Davis, Riles Barkley versus Dallas, and Ark versus Blanca Cat. So stay tuned for that. We're going to move down to our loser side. So if we get those matches going, Watson versus L. Alex. All right, so we are moving into losers round one here at Top in the Shop for this week. L. Alex versus Watson. So these guys are pretty much training partners. So you're going to see a couple of match -up, basic matchup tips kind of go out the windows. When you know somebody that well, you really aren't really don't need to push so hard uh, the, the get some, most of the guessing game is taken out because you're already familiar with what the other guy is capable of what you're capable of and how to take advantage of commonly seen situations so we're probably going to see that a little button check action to get things started I'm going to run to the bathroom try to get back here for the match starts Hey, what's up? This is Red CEO. Uh, like you said earlier, these two practice together on the regular. Although I think I can confidently say that Watson puts a lot more time into learning this game than L. Alex does. Uh, not just a lot more time, but he stuck with one character and learned the fundamentals of that character, whereas L. Alex kind of hopped around. Um, so what you're probably going to see here is a lot of Sakura pressure and a Cody trying to figure out how to get her off of you know, him, get him out of the corner, stuff like that. <laughs> Thanks, Jay Slow. Ooh. Gotta take those throws, Alex. Gotta take them. One thing that Watson is very good at, he's very good at soccer of footsies. You know, sticking the foot out there, bopping somebody that's pushing buttons. Uh, also very good at converting low forward into DP. Uh, he makes a lot of money off of that, which is very good, because soccer bread and butter. Uh, so here, uh, L. Alex is in the corner again. Uh, Desperation Ultra. Oh, it worked. Uh, just try to get off me thing. Uh, but their one is comeback factor, so <laughs> L. Alex is going to be hard pressed to catch up. L. Alex is godlike for the random stupid wake up ultra. Yeah, no, for real. I mean, Watson yells at him so much. He's like, that's never going to work on good people. And then it always hits Watson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, 
All right. So Every time Watson gets a little salty, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, Watson uh, willing to burn bars to make the damage, uh, to push that damage through. Watson up 1-0. Melt this guy like two. Yeah, Yoohoo, man. Too real. Good overhead. Man, just crushing Sakura's head. Good footsies. Austin always has pretty solid footsies. I, I definitely know that he is uh he's he's feeling he's feeling that loss from uh Prophet earlier. Oh he is. He's hungry. And uh I think he's 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 getting a little too anxious on those low forward uppercuts, and that's one of those things where if you if you keep trying to force through offense and it keeps whiffing, you keep driving combo. You got to scale it back and just keep it simple. Got to get those hit confirmed. Yeah, and, and and don't be so. It don't. And if you have that in your head that you're like, okay, well, I want a low forward and uppercut, and if I if it whiffs, then I can just then I can just burn those two bars. You don't want to have that kind of a mentality because you're just throwing away meter at that point. Right. I have that problem with Lentil a lot. There. That's a purpose. You can block that. Now ultra him, please. They're gonna let it rock and build the ultra. Plenty of time to come back here. I mean, look at Sakura. She she lands on the spine of the other character, or is it the midsection? No, that's right in the stomach. Man, the spine would have been probably too uh, too paraplegic. Too X-rated. <laughs> Triple X-rated. Man, he's with that overhead. I'm just trying to figure out how Cody got street clothes while in prison. Like, is this his PJ? I, like, is he? I think is what Cody? happened is I think is what happened. Here's my here's my here's my thought behind this. The clothes he's had are so random. I think it's like zombie apocalypse, and he got out of jail, oh. and he's been running through uh, a, a, a department store. Yeah, <laughs> and he's just been putting on all kinds of random clothes. Or he took the knife and killed a crossing guard. I'm more impressed on how he got that shirt on over the cuffs. Damn. Yeah. See, food for thought. Yeah. He's a witch. He is a witch. Like. Who makes cuffs like that I mean, big, you though? You gotta think about it, though. He is a witch. He's getting rocks off a spaceship. That's and true, sand, man. You know? Man, Cody is the highest level magic user I've seen, I've ever seen in any fighting game. How did Sakura get in space wearing that dress? I can't be like NASA's qualified <laughs> attire. I mean, I don't know. Maybe she was just chasing Ryu around the Florida Keys area. <laughs> Ooh, reset underneath! Yo, great damage. Keeping it simple on that one. Good stuff. Fireball? I don't, I don't he's like not doing the fireball anymore. Interesting. That's okay though. Wow, he wanted the cherry on top with that tick throw setup after the cross up. Alex not having it. Cody and is an Dude, the great <laughs> Oh yeah, maybe he's an alchemist. Okay, okay, that's fair. Um, you know, the nice. thing is is like big combo damage doesn't affect L Alex at all because he just kinda wears it in the head and kinda goes, huh. Huh. And then just goes right back to his game plan. Well, I'm gonna wake up Ultra now, thanks. <laughs> Alright, so if there's any way to get the monkey off your back uh, from a previous loss, it's definitely hitting a, a mix up like that and making it count. Alright, so coming up next, so Watson will move on. Good stuff to L Alex, like I said, getting better every week. He's on the warpath to get that first top in the shop win. Aqualad versus Trevor, da Tra Trevor Davis coming up next. Is it confusing? Hey, if that Xbox is plugged in, we have Ultra on that one too. Yeah, if you guys want to keep playing. I mean, there'll be a little frame difference on the screens, though, but, yeah. All right. Just a disclaimer. It's probably because that's lagless. Oh, it's probably a PC? Hey, well, he, he plays on PS3. Yeah, I play on PS3. Oh, yeah, well, now I'll do it. Uh, it is super loose. My brother's not even carry it. Grab that one. Comes in here, Mine will be in commission. Uh, is J-Spot going to fix that tonight? Oh, I should tell him to bring my... Oh, I don't know if he has his tools. I don't know how long that will take. Mm. But I'm going to give him the piece with the clicks. Because mm. I have it now. Or give me the clicks and he can take the... Just take the piece. Yeah. Without the clicks, it's plastic. It right the click. Cody is an <laughs> alchemist. Zombie buffet. Yeah, speaking of zombie. Okay, so Trevor Davis is a newcomer to Top in the Shop. 
And I told him today when I, I played it, I played him in, uh, it's in third strike, and we we're, you know, he's like, he is like, he is the greenest you could possibly be, like, jumping around, figuring out what buttons do what, what's the purpose of this. Really confused as to why this controller is bigger than his lap. Yeah, I, he's like, I thought only dumb controllers were for Guitar Hero. <laughs> and DJ Hero. <laughs> and DJ Hero. Uh, so I told him, I said, you know, the worst thing you could have done in that match. He looks at me like, what, am I going to get yelled at? Because the worst thing you could have done in that match was never pick up a controller. So I was really glad that he was able to play. Oh, is it not on there? Garbage. I think it's on that one. Oh, oh it is on that it's one. It's on that one. It's on the third strike one. So Akalai going to go to work here. Yeah. Hey, guys, playing third strike. Riley. Move over to this Xbox. Switch Xboxes. Uh, so I'm just going to pretend that Trevor Davis is uh, rolling a, an amazing guy right now. Yeah. Okay, so Trevor Davis already making great choices in life going to Yoon, which is arguably the best character in the entire game. Truth. Which, you know, I was reading some, uh, some stuff that uh, Ultra David was uh, tweeting out about, about how he, he was going to, uh, to devote some time to learning Yoon. And, you know, figuring, trying to figure out basically why Yoon's the best character in the game, right? Why hasn't he been winning tournaments? Literally, he has not won any tournaments. You know... And it might be one of those things where, on paper, Yoon might be the best character in the game by the numbers. But everybody's not scared of Yoon anymore. Like, that's what I think. Oh, I think he sense. was so overpowering. The X factor's not there. Yeah. Whereas, it, like, if you play a character nobody knows, wow. it's not X factor. Wow. Did he mean to do that? that was Get bot. Yeah, I'm talking to you. He's already a winner in my, in my book. Trevor Davis is awesome. I hope he comes and plays on every top in the shop. I'll, I'll teach him the game. He always plays it. Oh my god. That dash punch is actually like the it looks like an option select because you're seeing him hit buttons and then the and then the punch comes out because Trevor Davis or because Aqualad is back dashing. It yeah. looks like an option select <laughs> every time. Aqualad's like what is Oh my god, that's a real combo! Low strong, low strong. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, Canadian! Hey, 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 and I go, what? <laughs> He turns around and he's like, yeah, Evo 11, 12, and 13. I was there. Machinery drop early on, good stuff. Oh, man. That's so awesome. Man. If only he pressed a kick button while moving the stick back and forth. See, I, f I feel like here's what's going to happen. <laughs> I'm going to sit down and actually teach him. <laughs> See? Just See? He knows. He heard me. He just DP'd. I'm going to sit down and teach him how to play real street. What profile is that, first off? That's Riles Barkley's profile you guys are on. Because you guys are... Everything combos on Yoon. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, that's it. Aqualad's going to take it Everything too combos well. on Yoon. Everything Yoon. combos off of Yoon. <laughs> Man. In fact, I Yoon rearranged spells combo. Don't quote me. <laughs> Riles Barkley versus Dallas coming up next. Good stuff to Trevor Davis. Glad he came out and played. Glad he gave the game a chance. Awesome, Hope dude. to see him come back and uh, learn some more. We're so like hyped. I said, if you ever are on the fence about learning a fighting game, no better place in the I-70 area in the Midwest to come in and learn a fighting game than PPU Card and Game. We've got we've got levels. We have all kinds of levels. We've got guys from KC that's been playing Street Fighter since Tur Super Turbo that will come out and show us a thing or two about how to play. So you really get a little bit of everything uh, that, that the Kansas City area has to offer by playing Street Fighter out here in uh, PP Card and Game. Um, but we're going to go right into it here. We've got Dallas. Looks I was like, like who they plays Cammy? They switch sides. God, is this difficult? All right, Riles Barkley. So the cam, the camera, they they cross the streams uh, on the setup, so that's why the name, the the camera is not reflecting the names. But regardless, Dallas playing Cammy, Riles Barkley as Ken. Um, like I said, uh, Riles Barkley is the second top in the shop. It's gonna pretty much be who can muscle damage in harder 
uh, with special attacks pretty much. So uh, Riles Barkley going to need to protect his feet as Dallas will throw out cannons or uh, spiral arrows, excuse me, on the regular. Jump medium kick. Oh, the big football comes in, gets a throw regardless. Focus attack. Riles Barkley trying to get his feet in there on Cammy. Huge damage. None of that linked. Just do it. Mission complete. Will the tide of battle turn? Fight! Right, the side. Jump back EX Tatsu. Burn a little bit of bar. Not something you really want to do at the beginning of the game. Wow, characters both change the side advantage and squeeze out of DP regardless. Low forward Tatsu. Big focus trouble at 10. EXDP. I said, uh, I, I could talk about the approaches that both these characters want to follow, but good crumple into Ultra. Fortunately, whenever Ken hits his leg, whenever he hits his knees, he's considered an airborne at that point. So the whole Ultra is not going to connect. Dallas will take game number one. So we'll just go ahead and talk about what Riles Barkley used to do. As a new player, one of the hardest concepts to get across to a new player is the concept of just blocking. Because as a new player, you want to be pressing buttons, you want to be doing special moves, you want to do ultras because they look really cool, but I cannot, a, a, blocking is so important. And touching on that, block and punish is the other, is the other half of that equation. So, holding back, let the other guy do a special attack and then punish it. 90% of the moves in this game are built that way to where if they do a special move and you block it, you get to punish it. So for example, Riles Barkley playing Ken against Dallas, what he wants to look for here is he wants to be able to block the spiral arrows, punish with a DP. Just keep it simple, punish it with a hard punch uppercut. Unless it is spaced perfectly on Dallas's end, it's going to be punishable. The same is going to apply to Kami's DP as well. Now, the only special move that Kami can do that will not be punished on block is the spin knuckle, and that has to be hit on the way in. But we haven't really seen Dallas use that hardly at all, so that's one thing that Riles Barkley does need to watch for. So just block and punish, don't do anything super strenuous. And uh, you'll be able to win. And right now, taking a slower approach to the game, is paying off. See if Dallas can drive it in here. Unable to finish the combo off the dive kick. Oh, tried to punish with the throw, but the DP hanging just above that throw range. So it worked out. So a little bit of block and punish worked in Ryle's favor that turn. Uh, and he's coming right in. And good stuff to Dallas for recognizing that jump and just mashing out DP. Barkley replies in kind. Both of them trying to land those big folks attacks in there. Trying to say, I want to crumple you because that's cool. Block and punish. That's the name of the game. Dive kick into sweep. Spiral arrow. So now we're getting a little, getting a little bit too, uh, trying to force the issue a little bit. Target combo not confirmed. DP not punished. I was talking about the importance when you're in, when you're a lower level player, the importance of block and punish. And really, like, if one of these players decides to just start blocking and punish, <laughs> it's accidental <laughs> ultra, but it looked good. Or accidental. Oh, yeah, yeah, but it looked good. No, yeah, block and punish is the definitely the best way for a new player to. And, and like, especially like I was thinking with Riles Barkley, literally all he has to do is just block low and then punish with a DP. Find a special move. DP. Yes. He's trying to he's trying to nail the con card combo in there. Dallas will block and spiral arrow. Dallas would yeah. Dallas will block and spiral arrow or uppercut and and Ken, yeah and, and then Ken will just block and DP like literally everything. It make it really interesting when Ken figured out how to throw a fireball. Well, I was saying like the two moves that inherently you don't punish on block for Ken will be fireball and for Dallas it'll be spin knuckle. Yeah. No, 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 it hasn't. All right, so Dallas is going to take it 2-0. Shout-outs to Riles Barkley for coming out for his second top in the shop. Hopefully he continues to come out.
get better. I'm going to I'm gonna have to sit down with him and really show him the finer points of Ken Masters. We're going to round out losers round one with Ark versus Blanca Cat. Coming up next. And Blanca Cat will wake up and she will play Street Fighter. Now she often plays the best when she's half asleep. She, st she stumbles out to the... She'll probably take three seconds and actually wake up. You look like you're still on Mars. Blanca is dead right now. <laughs> All right, so I, again, I don't know if man, Twitter's being weird today. It gave me a retweet from something I didn't even. The machines are revolting. Yeah, I don't know. Alright, so uh, yeah, I did think that the characters are switched. Go figure. Sorry, Alex. I mean, he can, he can sign them out. They're not playing online. Right. He, right. They should still be able to play. I think, <laughs> I think, uh, I think they, uh, well, Blancats often complain that we don't have the, her color on here, which is, which color does she use? Blue? Blue? Cat, we'd have your color if you played more. Oh, real talk. Damn. Right now, Ark. Ark with this breast cancer awareness guy. Well, that was a weird interaction. He, like raised Blanca's hitbox, so he didn't get hit by the foot. Just trying to mind game him. Uh, well, Mr. Guy, I'm not gonna. I really don't want to try your name out on stream. Nick Ginger. Uh, this is located <laughs> in uh, Oak Grove. In a place where saying Oak, those things are allowed. <laughs> Oak Grove, Missouri. No, we definitely did not get to intone <laughs> racism. <laughs> Thanks, Jesse Sims. <laughs> the support. All right. Exactly. Uh, Jesse, that probably took him 10 minutes to type, you know. No kidding. With the information option select. <laughs> All right. I'm going to get back in this match so hard right now, both hands in. Okay, so... Blanca is always a, a, a harder match for newer players to learn because he's very unorthodox in how he moves. So when you learn this game, you're used to like fireball, uppercut, hurricane kick, and then Blanca comes at you with all these weird up balls, Sonic horizontal balls. Sonic the Hedgehog punish. Yeah, Sonic the Hedgehog stuff. So what you're going to want to do is realize you want to learn the differences between the balls that Blanca has to throw out. Oh, my God. Yeah, just ultra. She's playing brain dead. Dude, I, I think if we were to put like an EKG machine on Bonkat right now, it would just have a straight line. Alright, so right before this match gets wrapped up, the horizontal ball cannot be focused attack. You must block and punish that accordingly. The up ball can be focused attacked if it's done normally, but if it's a reversal, it will break armor. And it's an, also an anti air, so if you get hit by that normally, you're doing something wrong, or you're jumping. Arc, block and punish, my man! Finally, the rainbow ball, this, the, the ball that uh, Blanca does where she steps back, uh, that is, you can definitely focus tech through that one. So that is your quick primer on how to deal with Blanca balls. That being said, it's all about understanding space, and when your opponent is willing to do it, <laughs> man, she is hopping like crazy. She's making high-pitched noise, and that's just rude. <laughs> And, wow, okay, I just want to point out right now, if you guys watched Top of the Shot before, that is the second time all tournament that she has used it's electricity. It's really funny when, when no, Blanca, think ca about no, when Blanca this. Cat's confident she won't mash electricity, and all of a sudden she has balls. No, 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 when she's half, when she's half awake, when okay, she's yeah, dead. Okay, sorry. When she's half asleep and she doesn't mash electricity, she doesn't get punished, she doesn't lose her bars, and what, things happen. Yeah. Good stuff to Ark. 
Good tournaments. We'll give you horse tranquilizers before every match. Is that illegal doping, though? Oh, shh. That's candy. <laughs> okay. Watson versus Aqualad coming up next in our losers round two. All right. Now, we, s we saw a little bit of uh, we saw a little bit of maybe salt from Watson when he got knocked in the losers bracket. Let's hopefully he shook that off by now. Aqualad. This is gonna be a hard match. This is gonna be a very difficult matchup. Uh, hey Watson, don't use that stick. The gate is super loose on it. Yeah. Hey, go steal it from Kazza's if you have to. Or you can use that eight arc down there, or the fighting edge too, if you want to use that. Or Blanca Cat stick. Yo, speaking of fighting edge and cool things, check this out. Use silent buttons. Silent buttons. Silent buttons. Silent buttons. Silent buttons. Nice. Yeah. Silent buttons, so sick. Yeah. So I have my eight replacement buttons. All right, I dig it. Yeah, I got, I got you guys. Literally, any day of the any day of the week, any time of the day, you can find somebody playing Street Fighter that will show you how to play. Yeah, literally. Basic Yoon exhibition. Yeah, Yoon's a good player. He's the best character in the game. So yeah, so if you want to learn a good character, he's a good one to learn. We can teach you the basics. Guy, oh my God, no, they switched him. They switched him back. What? What gentleman? No, because then player one, the, the oh, oh, I forgot your name. Started. Yeah. Uh, Watson. All right. So I don't know. Has Watson played? Against Aqualad before? I don't. I don't think so. Like I said, Aqualad's been out of the loop long enough. Yeah, I play that knows the setups, knows the mix-ups, knows the combos. It's a huge culture. It's, it's, it's like it's like Forte. Yeah, it's kind of exactly. like El Forte. Like if you've just never seen Guy, then you're gonna be a little bit thrown off. So the things that Watson does well in his game, the crouch, fierce punch, anti-air. Um, he's gonna. It's not gonna work super well against the okay, elbow. Okay. Uh, oh, I can't believe he didn't DP right there. I think he wants to super him. Oh, want to cancel with the dash? So, what you want to do in that situation? Focus attack, back dash, or because I don't know if Sakura's got any like really good low profile moves. So I think her crouching medium kick still keeps her hitbox pretty elevated. It does. I don't think I don't know what she's doing. To be honest. Yeah, I mean, like I'm. That's what I was saying. Uh, like, pretty much like what I was saying is. Uh, Focus like back dash would probably be your best answer. When you're in the corner to Aqualad, that's when his mix ups are the most dangerous. Good blocking on the overhead, doesn't get the DP up that low medium kick. Following each other, man, every time he's like trading, he's like not getting a good trade. Watson he's not needs trade to at either all. block the elbow drop or focus back out. Like yeah, you know, like I said, this is one of those things where if you're not used to the matchup, it's just difficult to do. Watson, stop trying to punish the elbow drop. Focus like back. Okay. I mean, it might be an angle thing. I don't know. Oh, he's got it. So he has hit it some clean sometimes, though. Or maybe just. He no. Took a lot of damage from it. Keep doing it, Watson. I believe, no, in, I believe you. in you. Don't listen to me. Look down at the scissor You're blade. Man. I don't listen to me. Look you down at the. This. Look down at this. Look down at the scissor blade. Don't lose your way. It's yeah. The oh, he's inspired. Oh, he, need. he needs the Sinketsu ult. Go to character select. Get the Sinketsu ult. <laughs> Or PE close because you have to run a train on guy. Well, I will say this: Aqualad has really good uh, defense against uh, tick throw setups. He's always hitting, crouching light punch. He has, or a, he light has a very interesting pattern. Oh, look, it hit clean that time. Good back dash. That's what I wanted to see. Yo, don't get trapped in the corner. He's gonna get the, the trash dunk. The next jump is gonna be a trash dunk. Look at this. What did he? He hasn't played for two months. There's the anti-air. That only hit because it was a trash dunk. We thought he just was at home for the last. That's so dumb. Dude, he went to hang out with Mark Teddy. He's hanging out with Mark Teddy, 
learning the guy. I've never seen him do run stop, block string, run stop, block string. I've never seen him do that. And unfortunately for Watson, he doesn't have a three frame reversal. He does. Oh, the reset! Get in there! He got him. Didn't didn't complete the combo though. Under the microphone. I apologize. Oh, let it rip! Level two folks tag is safe on block. Oh, the trash dunk. Oh, I like it. He fished for that. Oh wow, he's hit it twice. Alright. I believe you, Watson. I have never never doubt. So I was gonna say, like, Aqualad definitely is willing to uh Bust out the Tatsu if he's feeling a lot of pressure. Uh, one of guy, guy's only reversal option, really. Yeah, he's really good about that. Because just when I think, nah, he won't do it. Right, he does. does every time. So what I would have, what I would do if I was Watson, I would start. Well, it's a little too late now. Oh yeah, if he, he got him, got him. XTP, XTP. No! XTP. All right. Good stuff. Unfortunately, Watson ran into a little bit of a, a wall with having not a character he is familiar with. But Aqualad will move on to play Combat Kid in round three. Dallas versus Blanca Cat. I'm from the I'm excited to see what Prophet Beast is going to do against Dallas, or the winner of Dallas and Blanca Cat. Now, please don't cross him again. Yeah, literally, he's like, I'm always player one. Yeah, just let us know in the next tournament what you want your handle to do. Change the dog. Yeah, it'll be next Tuesday, by the way. You got a handle you like, for sure. You can change it every week. Yeah, they should be switch. They should be correct if you guys didn't make it. Yeah, man, thanks for playing. I feel like that's a terrible idea. I feel like that's a terrible idea. As much as I want to say the fuck off, it's actually true. We're in 0-2 right now, are Oh, gross. That sucks. You want to make new where I can be a Broncos fan and throw my mouth at Jesus? Ugh. I know, I'm awful. But, hey, keep in mind, I was not born here. I'm a West Coast baby. That's fine. I lived there for a long time. Uh, so, Blanca Cat versus Dallas. Now, I want to say that Blanca Cat has as far as skill and time put in the game, on paper she should win this 2-0. But I feel like she's waking up. What? <laughs> See, look, she's bouncing. She's awake. She's awake. She's, she's got done. that. She got that energy. Yeah, you're drink. done. You woke now, up. now, but that being said, if she goes crazy with Blanca balls that are not used correctly, the damage that Cami can do just because she's Cami will win. Will win the match. She's gonna go one of two ways. Look, there's an up ball that didn't. Or Dallas is gonna drool away. Or, or she's gonna get put on hold. And you start matching like like dude electricity. Yeah, she's gonna I you see like this is the one time I'd be like dude electricity. Because Cammy is always because Cammy is always uh the, this Cammy is always pressing buttons all the time. Cross up, good, I guess. Just don't do anything. Just don't Yeah. Good up all punish, I like it. I think that was a guess though. She's in range, sniper rifle, target locked in. And he just <laughs> So the, the the right way to, to block that ultra would be to jump over it, not land on Blanca, and then block the second one. He might have lived too. Uh up ball. See it's like instead of yeah, instead of instead of going after Candy, like this style of player that's willing to jump around and do a bunch of moves, wait. Like, Blanca has all the answers. Up ball. Thank you. That's what I was ready to talk about. Like, like just, you don't even have to move forward. Just, did you go in the air? Up ball. Did you focus attack? Break it. Blanca has the life lead. There's no... No reason. Yeah, like, Blanca... Now, see, Blanca's not a lame character, but he's also not a character that does well by staying up in the opponent's face. Like, he's got a couple combos, but he wants to, like, first damage and then reset. Like, I, when I play Blanca, I always try to sit at the two square range. So, for those of you watching at home, this training stage is not just a blank level for the sake of being a blank level. The squares and the grids that you see are there to measure out the spacing of your moves and the exact hitboxes of the characters. That being said, Tal Dallas is going to come back here and take a round. So, block and punish again. Like I said, it is a, it is a tried and true um, 
game plan mentality of lower level players and even high level players. Like, if I'm playing this Kami online right now, I'm going, okay, what is he willing to do? He's just throwing out random spiral arrows and random DPs. And every once in a while, he'll get a uh, dive kick to hit. Now, since I know Kami's damage is so high, you have to respect it. You can't just be like, this guy sucks. I'm just gonna, I should win no matter what. No. As you see right now, Kami doing Kami things is gonna re lead into Kami damage. They're gonna lead to the Kami victory. So Blancat gotta slow it down right now. And he is going way too hard in the pain. Why are both of you looking at the door? You are playing a part of the match. Yeah. Scrubs on scrubs on scrubs. I'm not talking about the people <laughs> that walk in. All right. So let's see if let's see if Abby can. And that's what I'm talking about. Like no blocking. No, that's not it. That was just one what are, you, what are you doing? It's 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 one up Dallas. Oh hello baby. We have a baby in the shop. The future of Street Fighter actually. Alright. Spiral arrow in. Punished with the rainbow ball. Like I said, like even electricity would be a better option than trying to do the rainbow ball all the time. And I I, I don't know if it's because Abby wants up ball, but just does the wrong charge motion. Oh, I think she gets autopilot. She plays autopilot. Okay. She only wants one way to play. Yeah. She plays it that way no matter what. She doesn't have to ask her. Because the throw buttons is after she hops around. Right. She's not tech throws. She's not mixed up with throw. So Dallas on match point now. Just she just needs to block and punish. Like, but then again, you know, and if I'm Dallas though, like I'm not, I'm not trying to be biased against Dallas or anything. I'm just basically stating the strategies to beat players who have these tendencies. Dallas seems to be like, all of this is working. Literally no reason to change and do anything different. Present it to him on one knee if you could. In the background of this. <laughs> it was on stream too. We don't have our clicks with a herald. Alright, so Blonky Cat shaking it off. Dude, I almost straight stole that box. I almost just straight, I say, I hate friendship. I just don't. I just walk out. All right, Bond Cat, 50% life lead now over Dallas by doing what? <laughs> Nothing, by just playing basic blocker. This is the waiting I was talking about, good stuff. So now Dallas has got to figure out a better approach. He can't jump in because he's going to up ball. That was a good, up ball was a good answer. Here comes Dallas. Good electricity. Uh-oh, here comes Dallas. Chasing down the rainbow ball. Oh, big electricity. EX able to fan out there and nab the back of that dive kick. Now Blancat up 1-1. One, one. So Blancat won because she <laughs> settled down and did nothing. Like, she settled down and just played smart Blanc again. I'll order all a focus attack. Alright. Dive kick. Good. That was a good combo. Worked off that counter hit damage too, which is huge. Blanc taking a lot of damage right now. Trying to punish that. Well, you need to figure out a way to get out of jail. Great punish by Dallas. That's when you want to use the rainbow balls to get away. I, that's that's totally punishable. She's just doing it late. It's kind of hard to charge, though, in my opinion. Well, you always got to be holding down yeah, back. Because well, you can't you can't smash DP. Like you have the time. Right? She had he has time. Like right now she's holding charge this way. Well, I mean the forward motion. I always have a hard time punishing uh, charge characters. Yeah, no, yeah, it's totally doable. Bad slide. Dallas looking to get on match point here, but the electricity power up. Okay. Why? Good punish, Dallas. Next damage. I like it. Jump light kick, DP. Play Cammy. Ooh, jump back grab. Interesting. High damage Cammy punish with throw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she goes, I don't need frames. The tech is unreal. Light punch plus light kick. The football is getting blown up by Blanca. Blanca's here for the beach, dog. Yo, so you want to play beach games? You want to play beach games with me, Kami? Like, you want to do special moves? I'll do special moves. She's like, I'm like a slutty stewardess. <laughs> no, real talk, Cammy's alt four is godlike. Punished. 
She's in sniper range. You are you have permission to fire. Okay. So that yeah. that is it. Oh yeah. Good job to both these players. Good stuff to Dallas. See, I like when Dallas plays because he always puts people on notice. You have to respect the cam cam damage. So we got Combat Kid versus Aqualad. And then we'll have Prophet Beast versus Blonde Cat. Yeah, Combat Kid versus Aqualad. That Prophet Beast match is going to be interesting. Oh my god. It's gonna be interesting. This is gonna be a reversal of what we just of what we just watched. Instead yeah. of Dallas, it'll be it'll be Prophet Blanc Beast. Blanca Beast. To... No, Blanca Cat will be in the Dallas. Yeah, Dallas drive. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. So yeah, so Prophet, Prophet Beast, Beast will if he tries to do stuff, <laughs> he's gonna die. Yeah. If he blocks and punish, he'll win. But if he tries yeah. to do stuff, he's gonna die. Yeah. But right now, Combat Kid versus Aqualad. So again, this is a matchup not a lot of people are gonna be familiar with. Although Combat Kid, uh, having come out with Arc. Has you know, he's got to have some experience with how guy looks on the board. I mean, he's not a buddy that plays him. I'm also on the fence of whether or not I like Combat Kid's name because it's spelled like Mortal Kombat. Well, see, actually, I've been having this internal struggle. And you can't, and you can't <laughs> like, and it's just, it's you know, you can't, you can't like both. Aqua Clad, that's a good Aqua Clad, Aqua Clad. That sounds like a ship, like a, a big like, metal. It like, was, it was Aqua Clad. Yeah. So we're in losers round three. Your destiny will be determined here. <laughs> Aqua clap. Oh my gosh, it's clad, not clap. Yeah, I read the chat. You hope Ryan wins? I don't hope Ryan wins. Wow, both of Well, I like you, Ethan, now. Robbie <laughs> can go jump off a bridge. Yeah, Robbie can go get diabetes. Yeah, Robbie can go get diabetes. Yeah, we read the chat. It gets hidden sometimes when I... I gave you shout-outs earlier. Ethan, do you listen to the commentary? Because you said that, and I was like, thanks, Ethan. I want to win. totally like first strike here off the screen, by the way. Yeah, it's actually really happening. It was. It was. got turned off. Yeah. Right on. Uh, Aqualad just ran over Combat Kid for the first round. Um, like I said, so what I was talking about earlier... Yeah. Um, one thing I would definitely say about this matchup in particular, Shoto versus Guy, is your low four, your low medium kick is going to be your best friend. Hello, bro. I'm not even in the tournament. Bobby's not playing. He can't win. I, but he does win. So <laughs> you win, uh, Ethan. That's who wins. You win always. Uh, cuts off parts of the letter. The oh, you're talking about the K and the D. Oh yeah, it's. Well, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm probably going to ditch this pawn. It's. I, I wanted something. This is our budget font. We're poor. It's, it's we can't a, afford the rest of the K or the D. <laughs> yeah, it's this is actually the same font in Fight Club. So, why they decided to leave off like parts of letters is beyond me. I'm a level with you, Jesse. Get in there. Oh no, robbed. Combo fiend, please. Good focus attack. Too far away though. Anyways, I was gonna say earlier. Comic is trying really hard to adapt. Yeah, he is doing a good job at trying to adapt. Like I really like the measures he is taking. Like when he's in the corner, he's like, well, my ultra is a cylinder, so it's got to hit some part of this guy. This, this guy. This guy. So anyways, Shoto versus Guy matchup. If you're getting a lot of pressure from the jump-ins, low forward. It will low, pro it will low profile your character, it will make your hitbox lower to the ground, so Guy will have a harder chance of, of landing that elbow. But Guy can adjust to that too, so it's not necessarily a get out of jail free card. But Aqualad up. Like I said, Aqualad is always the dark horse in these tournaments because he's beat Steel Panther before. He's beat, he come close to beating Red CEO. He has literally never beat me. Dude, every, I, every time I sit down though, like... No, he can do it. I, I, I feel the same way about Kyle Brockman too. I feel the same way about Kyle Brockman. This can go one of two ways. Sweet bet. So, the combat kid was like, oh, I would do that. Good DP, that's what I'm talking about. so tight if you can focus jump on the jump beers. Yeah, uh, <laughs> just brain him on the ball. <laughs> okay, so stay into that classic Ryu. I really feel like his Ryu is stronger than his Ken. Um, because I think the things he does with Ken, he would be better off doing with Ryu. I think we saw a missed DP there if I stay in medium punch. He needs to this. Can't let this happen. Yeah, so that's not a true block string right hey, there. Hey, combat kid. Combat kid. When he's doing that in the corner, shove your fist into him. That's not safe. 
the well, the light kick, the, the light, the, the normals are. It's the normals when, are, but when he does that light kick thing, I don't know what it's called. Actually. Yeah, the run, it's the run overhead. But anyways, so there he goes. He blew it up. There you go. Hard punch DP is what I'm talking about. Tech. Solar plexus all day. Ryu on a super. Ooh! See, don't let him do that stuff. Yo, I think I think Aqualad wants the super right here. Remember how he used to be? He used to always when he was when he was. Uh oh, Shinku Hadouken. DP, I guarantee you. Oh, if he was in the corner, he got super. Oh, oh work the chest. Bleeding now. Ryu's bleeding. Call an ambulance. That's gonna. Oh, drop the target. Too far away. 